Welcome back to my lecture about fatigue. In the second part of my lectures, we will talk about fatigue life prediction. So we will be using the information we obtained from the first part, what we can observe and try to make some meaningful predictions. After this lecture, you should be able to describe the experimental method for obtaining fatigue material parameters. We should be able to explain the basic concept of the uniaxial SN approach and list the advantages and disadvantages of the uniaxial SN approach. What is fatigue life prediction? Well, fatigue life prediction is the prediction of the number of cycles a structure or a component can endure for a given cyclic loading condition. Fatigue life itself uh, can be distinguished into three categories. That would be low cycle fatigue, more relevant for earthquake, high cycle fatigue, which is very relevant for wind turbines, and also very high cycle fatigue. This lecture is concerned with high cycle fatigue, meaning that we are talking about lifespans of more than 10,000 cycles. If we compare our capabilities in understanding from observation and our ability to predict the fatigue life, it clearly shows that right now we are very good in observing and understanding, but we are having a hard time or a harder time to accurately predict the fatigue life. And this is owing to the complexity of fatigue, but research is very much uh, trying to uh, bring that balance back uh, and to increase our fidelity of our fatigue models. Now what you see here is uh, a family tree of uh, models and methods we have at our disposal to make fatigue life predictions. Grossly we can split or distinguish those into two uh, different approaches. One is the stress strain approach based approach and the other one is the fracture based approach. In this lecture, I will only focus on the uniaxial SN approach, which is by far the most established uh, method in industry. So how do we go about to uh, produce SN curves? And the answer is, it is a purely empirical process. And the way we do it is through testing. The tests are done on so-called coupons. As you can see here, they have a special optimized shape. They look like a butterfly and a gauge zone in the middle. And we take those specimens of a specific material and we put it in a uniaxial testing machine. And then we subject it to a cyclic loading uh, spectrum. So we will have a harmonic load signal. We subject that uh, to the specimen until the specimen breaks. And so we have the maximum stress, the minimum stress and the two variables we are mostly working with if we talk about SN curves is the mean stress, which would be here, and the stress amplitude or twice the amplitude would be the stress range. Stress in this example refers to uh, this nominal cross section here in the middle of the gauge uh, region of the specimen and that means it is the force applied by the machine divided by this cross section area. On this slide, you see an example of a, such a test. We see here a coupon made from fiber composite material, but is special because in this case, the fibers are oriented in the horizontal direction, meaning perpendicular to the loading direction, which is vertical. Here you can see the stiffness degradation of the coupon. You can also see the hysteresis of it. And also we are recording the temperature during testing and we need to make sure that the temperature is controlled, that the specimen doesn't heat up too much. You see that in this case, and that's maybe the insidious thing of fatigue, is that you don't see anything happening. And if it happens, it happens really rapidly until we have here this final crack when the specimen fails. In this video, I'm not showing a coupon test, but I'm showing a sandwich panel with two composite skin layers with two notches on either side, subject to loading conditions, cyclic loading conditions in the vertical direction. And you can see here the stiffness degradation curve, which looks exactly as I have shown it in the first part of my, my lecture about uh, the fatigue phenomenon. We also see here the hysteresis and the area of the hysteresis is actually a measure of how much energy, mechanical energy is actually dissipated through the fatigue damage mechanism happening in the material. 
If we look at the infrared spectrum taken by an infrared camera, we can see that fatigue damage is associated, uh, closely associated with heat generation. And this heat comes from the uh, transformation of mechanical energy into heat. And that also shows once more that fatigue damage and thermodynamics are really closely interlinked. So after we have done a lot of those tests, we can start to produce an SN curve. So what does SN actually stand for? S means stress or strain, which we traditionally plot on the vertical axis, the ordinate, whereas the number of cycles N we plot on the abscissa. And each test represents actually a dot in the SN curve, uh, in the SN plot. Now, in order to obtain uh, an SN curve, we need to fit a curve to this point cloud. And it was Mr. Basker who proposed this power law, which actually relates the stress amplitude uh, to the number of cycles through those empirical constants we obtain from a curve fitting process. And these two imperial constants are C, the intercept of the SN curve with the ordinate, and M represents the inverse slope in the SN diagram. So we can see that the Pascal law is a purely empirical law that relies on fatigue testing. Traditionally, we are plotting the amplitudes or ranges versus the number of cycles in a double logarithmic plot. And in such a plot, the uh, data points and also the SN curve, this power law, uh, appears as a straight line. Here we have used a semi-logarithmic plot. There are obvious differences between SN curves uh, of composites and, uh, and metallic materials. Uh, let's start with metals first. We can see here this horizontal line, and this is the so-called cut-off limit. And so steel, for example, has a cut-off limit. And that means if your stress or strain range is below this cut-off limit, no fatigue damage is induced, rendering an infinite life of the structure. Whether such a cut-off limit exists for composite material is uh, still an ongoing uh, research question and a lot of research effort is put into that, uh, in, in, uh, into that to answer the question if a fatigue limit exists and where exactly it is located. Arguably the most pronounced difference between composite materials and, 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 and metals uh, and steel, for example, uh, in fatigue is that composite materials outperform uh, metals in terms of their resistance towards fatigue loading. And this is reflected in the difference of the slope in the SN curve. Now, before I have explained that we have also a mean stress, so the SN curve only reflects the amplitude or the range, but we also have, of course, the mean stress value, and that also has an effect on the fatigue life. It is clear that if uh, we are testing a material at a higher mean stress, we should expect a shorter fatigue life. And in order to do so, we need to do lots of those SN curves at different mean stress values, which is reflected in the so-called R ratio. And so we can have actually four regions. We can have a tension-tension regime. We can have a tension-compression regime, compression-tension, or a compression-compression situation where the mean stress always is uh, in, the, in, uh, in the negative uh, part, so that the whole signal is actually in compression. Now, each SN curve is actually represented along those lines. And once we have obtained them, we can interpolate the points by a so-called constant lifeline. And this constant lifeline is the blue line you see here. And what does the constant lifeline mean? It means that every point on that line renders actually the same fatigue life. And if we take many of those contours, those uh, constant lifelines, we are forming a constant life diagram, which is specific for a composite material system. Here we can see an animation of a real as measured constant life diagram. And we see that the CLD is actually a 3D surface. 
uh, in a space where we plot vertically the range or the amplitude, horizontally we play the, uh, display the, uh, the mean stress and in the third direction the number of cycles. And that the constant lifelines I have shown schematically before are nothing else but contours or slices through that 3D surface. The constant life diagram in composite materials forms a irregular polygon in the amplitude mean stress space. Now that we have established the constant life diagram and DSN curves, we can now start to look at the advantages and disadvantages of the SN approach. Let's start with the advantages. It is for sure a very computationally efficient method. It is simple and it is robust. It is a direct method. It means if you put the stress in, you directly get the uh, number of cycles out. It can be applied to very large finite element models efficiently using the standard stress or strain analysis. The disadvantages, on the other hand, are that it does not distinguish between the three growth stages uh, I have talked earlier about. It only sees the final point of failure and we don't know what has happened in the history until we arrived at that failure point. And it also does not consider the damage evolution. Uh, that means the degradation, the effect of the degradation or softening of the material in the structure. We are only looking at the stresses and strains of the intact structure. And thirdly, it does not consider the effects of multi-axial stress states. That means the effect of the other stress components which act simultaneously and produce this kind of cocktail effect that cannot be considered in the uniaxial uh, SN approach. As a summary in this lecture, you, we have learned that the SN approach is a purely empirical method and it requires a lot of fatigue testing of many different material systems and laminate types at various amplitudes and means. The two parameters we need to obtain from these uh, testing campaigns are uh, the slope or the inverse slope in the SN diagram and the intercept constant C. The Pascal law can be used to predict the fatigue life uh, of a material for a given cyclic stress or strain amplitude. The mean stress effect can be considered using a constant life diagram. It's very important uh, to memorize that both the CLD and the Pascal law are strictly valid only for constant amplitude loading conditions. And if we want to use it for variable amplitude uh, situations, we need to use a different approach. Thank you.